Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong and welcome to the second in our series of interviews with Dr. Brian Kennedy of the National University of Singapore. In this video, Professor Kennedy elaborates on the drugs that he is using in his lab and in his trials, including alpha-ketoglutarate and spermidine. He also gives his views on NAD boosters and rapamycin. And with that, let me start the interview. So I watched your keynote talk, uh, it was last week, the Ending Age Related yeah. Diseases, and you spoke yeah. about a couple of drugs that I've not really heard much of before in, yeah. in anti-aging. So uh, alpha-ketoglutarate and spermidine. But um, yeah. so could you, so for alpha-ketoglutarate, can you talk about what we found in animal models and kind of what the next steps are? Yeah, so um, what happened is that we started, when I was at the BAC, uh, Gordon Lithgow and I started working with a, a company um, called uh, Ponce de Leon Health, or PDL Health. Um, and they were interested in developing products to, to extend slow aging and extend health span. But they didn't want to go down a drug development route because of all the problems I mentioned in terms of getting approval for drugs, et cetera. So they, what we did is we started screening combinations of natural products that had been linked to aging in some way. And we did that in worms first. And we found combinations of things that had additive effects when you put them together. And there, there are two reasons for that. One is that, you know, we think that hitting multiple aging pathways is likely to have a bigger effect than hitting just one. So there's a biologic reason for that. But also, if you develop combinations of natural products or formulations, you can get IP around that too. So you can protect your inventions. Um, and we found some of those combinations in worms and then started studying them in mice. And actually, uh, Ponce de Leon Health has a product now called Rejuvent that you can buy on the internet. So it's already on the market. Um, the, the main ingredient that we've been studying in, the, in, that, in that product is alpha-ketoglutarate. And the exciting thing about it is that it doesn't just extend lifespan. In fact, the extension of lifespan is a little bit modest. It's about 10% in mice. What it really does is reduce frailty and extend health span by almost 50% in our mouse study. So we're getting compressed morbidity with this uh, natural product. It's generally regarded as safe. It's been given at very high doses in clinical trials by others with no side effects or toxicity. Uh, and um, we see many benefits with respect to aging in the animals. Now we have some anecdotal human data that looks promising as well, uh, but uh, we have uh, two clinical studies. One is already ongoing with the product of the company and it's being sponsored at Indiana University. And uh, that one got slowed down by COVID-19 as well, but it's running. Uh, and then the one that we're planning here with just alpha ketoglutarate and not the whole product. Uh, and that's more of a mechanistic study to try to uh, get a better feel for what this small molecule is doing. Um, so we don't have all the human validation yet, uh, but the animal data looks quite good. And uh, some of the anecdotal data that, that people are sending back to us that are taking the product is interesting as well. Um, one thing is that people have been taking alpha ketoglutarate for exercise performance and muscle building for a long time. Uh, in fact, you've, the product's already been on the market for a long time. Um, and uh, many people report improved exercise performance. So it'll be intriguing to see if we find that as well. Um, the uh, product on the market, though, is the problem with it is that it, it uh, I, I tried it. I got some off Amazon, and uh, it's very acidic. So if you take it on an empty stomach, it can cause a little bit of heartburn on the way down uh, just for a few minutes. And also, I think a lot of it is probably lost in the stomach. So the product that we developed is a sustained release version that you take, and it releases in the small intestine. So more of it gets to the body. So. So, you know, it's still early. We don't have all the validation we want yet, but it's, I'm definitely pretty excited about this, this small one. So, um, mm. I can comment on spermidine if you like to. So well, just before we move off, uh, so ketoglutarate. Okay, so, so we talked about, um, so it, it reduces frailty. So how, and you said you were going to do a trial. Or that's one of your first trials. So how are you yeah. going to kind of judge human frailty, uh, I guess, within... A reasonable period of time. 
Yeah, so we're going to look more at the biomarkers in the human studies. Oh, okay. And so we're, cor we're correlating that. We're looking at biomarkers in the animal studies, too. So that'll be more the outcome we're interested in. And it, mm -hmm. one reason for that is we want to work in people that are 45 to 65 as participants, not frail people. I, I think that ultimately this or other aging interventions might be beneficial in the frail population. But I also feel like at that point, you have people with a lot more problems. Uh, we want to look at it more from a stage where people are at risk of getting disease, but they're not yet sick, uh, and see if we can change biomarkers at that point. Because if we can, that really means we're keeping people healthy and functional uh, for a longer period of time. And then if things work, we'll, we'll move more to frail populations and see if there's any benefit there. I think once you're in a state of frailty, um, then a lot of the equations are different in terms of what the healthiest approaches are. And so uh, we have to sort of reevaluate, particularly that, for instance, diet. I mean, what's a healthy diet for someone who's healthy and 80 versus someone who's frail and 80 could be very, very different. So um, we want to start with healthier people first and then move to more frail people. Got it. Yeah, so if you could talk about spermidine, uh, just in introduce that, that would be really interesting as well. Yeah, so spermidine uh, is another natural product. Uh, it's produced in the body. You can get it through the diet. It goes down with age. Um, and it was really developed by other researchers, um, Frank Medeo, uh, Guido Kramer, and others, who've shown that it activates autophagy in the body. Uh, and we'd never played with it. One of the things I do in my lab a lot, especially with natural products, is try to validate some of the things that are out there in the literature and then get a feel for working with it in animal models before we start testing it in humans. Um, some things we're not so good at validating, <laughs> but spermidine uh, looks like it's the real deal, at least in our hands. So we can, we see a, a lifespan extension with it, although we only did a few mice for survival, so it's not well powered, but our data is consistent with the data in the literature. Uh, and we found that it's very protective for mice on a high fat diet. So that's um, exciting when you consider that many people are eating unhealthy high fat diets. Uh, and uh, uh, the, a molecule like this may be more beneficial, at least metabolically, for people with unhealthy diets and unhealthy lifestyles than people that are exercising a lot. So um, that's just speculation. But, but our data suggests spermidine is may be efficacious uh, and uh, that's I think that's on the market as well you can get that if you want, I think are you planning a trial with spermidine is that kind of in your roadmap so what we'd like to do is to choose many different interventions uh, small molecule supplements a couple drugs even and then also some lifestyle interventions because what I'd like to do you know many companies are trying their favorite molecule and um, I think that's fine. That's they're you know they're incentivized to do that. We'd like to take an agnostic approach where we're comparing different interventions and see which ones work the best in which populations. And so to do that, we'll do smaller studies per intervention, but we'll study many different kinds of interventions and then try to see which ones work the best. And certainly, spermidine would be on that list. We haven't resolved um, the the. Uh, order of studies beyond the, the three I told you, but um, uh, that's certainly one that I think is worth looking into in more detail. Right, yes. Um, so one thing, I guess, before we, we kind of leave uh, drugs, and um, so m many of our listeners, and in fact, so do I, take uh, NAD boosters, such as NMN yeah. or NR. Uh, yeah. Is this something you've looked at? Um, would it be part of your trials? Do you have any kind of comment on whether boosting NAD helps? Yeah, I, I well, yeah, I, I was published the first paper in linking sirtuins to aging and a long time ago in Lenny Carinti's lab. So I've been thinking a lot about sirtuin over the last 25 years. Uh, and uh, um, I, I certainly NAD is another, it's a little bit like alpha ketoglutarate in the sense that these are central metabolites in the cell. They're involved in hundreds of reactions. And they change levels with age. NAD levels go down. Uh, and there's quite a bit of evidence in animal models that supplementing them back up is beneficial for aspects of aging. Um, the data on lifespan extension, I think, is still in the air. And people have tried nicotinamide riboside and nicotinamide mononucleotide, two of the main 
precursors for NAD. It's, it's very hard to deliver NAD directly, so you have to do it through precursors. Uh, and um, most people see very small effects on lifespan uh, or no extension of lifespan. There have been a couple reports of extension. Uh, but a lot of people see health span benefits. And so uh, I think this is certainly another class of molecules that's worth testing in human clinical studies. And we'll definitely either look at one of those precursors or some other strategy to deliver NAD. I think one of the challenges, how do you deliver enough NAD to the body to make a difference? And um, we're trying to look at that and, and debate what the best strategy might be. Mm, yes. Um, so just before we leave, uh, actually drugs, there's one. Uh, so are you looking at rapamycin as well or any of the what, rapalogs, I think? Cool. Like, we, we've done a lot of studies with rapamycin in the TOR pathway uh, through the years. In fact, we published in, I think, 2006 or seven that reducing TOR signaling extends lifespan in yeast, and that's what got Matt Kaberlein's lab and my lab excited about it. Um, rapamycin in animal models is the gold standard. It seems to work in everybody's hands. It works in different mouse strains. It works in different species. Um, and... Uh, the, the challenge has always been how do you deliver it safely in humans because it does have side effects. And there have been strategies to do that. Uh, there have been many, many human clinical trials using rapamycin to try to treat cancer and a whole range of other diseases. So we know a lot clinically about how people respond. Uh, I think there are strategies to deliver rapamycin in a relatively safe way. And I think it's likely to work in human studies. I, I, if I had to bet on one thing, that's what I would bet on uh, as a drug, certainly, um, because the data is just so robust with it. Um, and, uh, but, you know, the side effect thing makes it a challenge. And so when I was at the Buck, we spun off actually two companies uh, to try to develop derivatives of rapamycin that had the same or better efficacy than rapamycin, but reduced side effects. And so those companies have different molecules they're studying now, uh, and they're trying to get into clinical trials to show that uh, we can deliver safety safely a tor TORC1 inhibitor uh, and not affect TORC2, so reduce the side metabolic side effects associated with the drug. So uh, I'm optimistic about that pathway. I, uh, I think that it's certainly a key pathway to target if you want to affect healthy aging. Right. Thank you all for watching, and I hope that you found the video informative. Professor Kennedy and his team published a paper last month in Cell Metabolism. Alpha-ketoglutrate, an endogenous metabolite, extends lifespan and compresses morbidity in aging mice. You can find the link in our description. For us, there were three key takeaways from this video. Firstly, the introduction of two supplements, alpha-ketoglutrate and spermidine. Both of them are natural compounds which have shown promising results in increasing health span in my studies. And secondly, is that for NAD, one of the key challenges is how to deliver enough NAD to the body, so it will make a difference. And finally, that rapamycin is the gold standard in animal models. As it does have side effects, the challenge is how to deliver it safely and effectively in humans. It seems there are companies trying to produce drugs derived from rapamycin with the same efficacy, but without the side effects. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you again soon.